You know, we believe that the Prophet ﷺ was the messenger of Allah. Then to what degree does that translate in my and your life? To what degree? Everybody knows that the man who loved the message of Allah وسلم, the most, Abu Bakr Sadiq عنه, But you look, he loved him. I mean, uh, the many examples on the Hijrah, Aisha radiallahu anha says when the message of Allah said, he came mid-morning, he came to our house. Mid-morning, the sun was out and he came and he said to Abu Bakr, I've been given permission to migrate. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Sohba ya Rasulullah. He said, a message of Allah, will I be, uh, do I have permission to come to accompany you in the migration? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Sohba. He said, you have been given permission. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu began to cry. He began to cry. Aisha radiallahu anha says that I had never seen a man crying out of happiness. But what was he? He was, it's a possibility now that he would be killed in the migration. But that didn't worry him. That was his love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then when the migration takes place, the narration mentioned sometimes Abu Bakr would run to the front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sometimes to the side, sometimes to the other side, sometimes to the back. And the Messenger of Allah said, he said, what are you doing Abu Bakr? And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, when I think somebody might just attack you from the front, I run to the front. Then I look around, maybe some you may be vulnerable from the back. So I run to the back. You know, this was his love. And then when they went into the cave, he said to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, allow me, allow me to go into the cave and clean the cave up. You know what Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu would say? Umar. Amir al-Mu'mini, a man who became the most powerful man on the face of this earth. You know what Umar would say? He said, I would give the actions of my entire life for a day and a night in the life of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. The actions of my entire life and the actions of my family for a day and night in the life of the Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. What was that day? That day was the cave. That day was the cave. I would give my entire life. And Abu Bakr radiallahu goes into the cave and he sees a number of holes and he takes off his garment and he rips the garment up into small pieces. And then he puts and then he puts and he covers the holes with the pieces of garment. But his garment runs out and there's still one hole which he has no which he has no garment or no pieces of fabric cloth to cover. And then, he, and then he asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come in. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes into the cave. And after a while, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to rest. So Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu says to the Messenger of Allah, he says, Oh Messenger of Allah, place your head upon my thigh. So the Messenger of Allah placed his head upon the thigh of Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, with the other foot, he covered the hole. So if there's any serpent or any, any spider, it cannot come out. And whilst Abu Bakr is in this state, with the head of the Messenger of Allah on his thigh, there's a snake in the hole. And that snake bites the foot of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And now Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is going through this excruciating pain. If we mean you speak about love. Mean you speak about love. But this was true love. And he's going through this excruciating pain. But he doesn't wake the message of Allah up. He doesn't wake him up. But he leaves him. And he, but he can't bear the pain. So his tears begin to roll down his cheek. And they fall on the cheek of the Prophet wasallam. And I often say, I say there is no... I have never come across an example of a person who loved another person more than Abu Bakr Sadiq loved the Messenger of Allah. Never. Never. If you study the history of Abu Bakr Sadiq, you will never find a man who loved a man who loved another person more than Abu Bakr who loved the Messenger of Allah. You know, mothers, mothers. Can you show me a mother in history who's been bitten by a snake, but she doesn't want to wake her husband up? Or vice versa? Or doesn't want to wake her child up? 
But he doesn't want to give discomfort to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the tears roll down his cheek and they fall upon the cheek of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the message of Allah wakes up and he sees Abu Bakr going through this pain. And he says to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, why didn't you wake me out? Now Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, the message of Allah, I didn't want to to inconvenience you. And I can give you example of example of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. But why? But his, his, his love for the message of Allah wasn't just a passive love. It was a love which inspired him. It was a love which made him hold on to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the ijma of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that nobody loved the message of Allah more than Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu loved the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you look, look at the night. The night when the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. Umar would say, the day and the night. And the night was when the message of Allah passed away. The message of Allah has passed away. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you ever are faced with a calamity, then remember my demise. Remember my demise. Because it dwarfs all other calamities. It dwarfs all other calamities. Those who experienced this were the Sahaba of the Allah. They, they were the ones who experienced this. I mean, Abu Bakr, uh, anhu, the love for the Prophet وسلم, was such that three days before the demise of the Prophet, وسلم, he gave his final khutbah. This was the final khutbah of the Messenger of Allah. وسلم, and the Messenger of Allah وسلم, ascended the pulpit. And he gave an example of a man who has been called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, oh, he has a choice to remain in this dunya. And he decides to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the other sahaba thought that this was just a mere parable. It was just an example. But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu understood that the messenger of Allah was referring to himself and he began to cry uncontrollably. And Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu anhu says, I saw this old man crying, Abu Bakr crying, and I couldn't understand why he's crying for. But he understood that the messenger of Allah is speaking about himself. He's speaking about himself. So he said, so the Prophet Sallallahu when he saw Abu Bakr crying, he said, Abu Bakr, calm down. Abu Bakr, calm down. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said an amazing thing in the tribute of Abu Bakr. If there was nothing else said regarding Abu Bakr, only this statement, it would have sufficed. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever has done me a favor in this dunya, I have repaid their favor. As for Abu Bakr, Allah will repay him on the day of judgment. And then he said, if I was to take a friend, it would have been Abu Bakr Siddiq, but the brotherhood in Islam will suffice. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, all the doors to the masjid should be closed besides the door of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi passes away and Abu Bakr is at his house of his wife and he hears and he comes into the masjid and the Sahaba are in a state of confusion. I often say, why was Abu Bakr crying on that day? Because Abu Bakr had cried, he's crying. Now it was turn for Abu Bakr to be the Khalif, to be the man, to lead the Muslims. And he goes into the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, and he removes, he removes the cloth from the face of the Mubarak face of the Prophet sallallahu and he kisses the forehead of the Prophet sallallahu and he said tipta hayyan wa mayyatan ya rasulullah he said you are beautiful in life O messenger of Allah and you are as beautiful in death and then he came out and he gave his famous khutbah Umar ibn al-Khattab would say whoever says that the messenger of Allah is dead I will remove his head from his body for he's a manafiq he's only gone like Musa went to see Allah he will be back he will be back and he stood up and Abu Bakr radiallahu told Umar, he said, calm down, oh, Umar, calm down. And Umar wasn't calming down. And then he gave his fame to Khutbah. He said, man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad maat. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah fa inna Allah hayyu la yamut. He said, whoever worship Muhammad, then let him know. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed on to his Lord. And whoever worship Allah, then let him know that Allah is hay. Allah is alive and death does not befall him. And death does not befall him. But after all this love, after the unparalleled love, did he start mourning now for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? There was no inactive mourning. 
After the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu literally the vast majority of that part of the Arab Peninsula, a great chunk, had rebelled. Alps and Zabian, two huge tribes, had decided to attack Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu had prepared an army which had Umar ibn Khattab, which had Khalid ibn Walid and all the leaders of the Muslims. All the mighty leaders besides Abu Bakr and everybody else in it. And then the Prophet ﷺ became ill. And that army is on the outskirts of Medina in a place called Jurf. And it's about to leave. Now two major tribes are decided to attack Medina. And the Muslims are in this state. And the army is there. So the Sahaba all agree that the army should not go. So they choose Umar ibn Khattab to send him to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu and Umar ibn Khattab goes to Abu Bakr and he says Abu Bakr the Sahaba are saying that there's a huge rebellion tribes are going to attack Medina all the warriors are in this army if this army is dispatched we will have nothing to protect Medina nobody to protect Medina he said, don't dispatch the army. What did Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu say? He said, this was a command of the message of Allah. This was a command. He didn't sit in our mourning. He got on with it. It wasn't just empty lip service. Oh, we love the message of Allah. And now it's finished. He said, I will not hold back this army. I don't care who it has in it. It was the final command of the message of Allah. And it will be dispatched. And then he said, amazing thing. He said, oh, Umar, I swear by Allah, if, I, if, I, if there was nobody else besides me left to defend Medina, I will still defend Medina. He said, by Allah, if I knew that the lion would drag my dead body out of Medina, I would still defend Medina. And then he said to Umar, he said, Umar, you were brave in Jahiliyyah. Have you become a coward in Islam? Have you become a coward in Islam? And then Umar went out and the general of this army was who? Osama bin Zayd. Osama bin Zayd was 17 or 18 years old. That's it. He was the general of this army. So the Sahaba said to Umar ibn Khattab, they said, oh, Umar, so Osama's inexperienced. Look, in this army, you got men like Khalid bin Walid. You got oh, yourself, Umar, in this army. You got all the leading Sahaba. Go back to Abu Bakr and to ask Abu Bakr that make somebody else a general. Make somebody else a general. So Umar ibn Khattab, anhu, he goes back to Abu Bakr Siddiq and he's sitting in front of Abu Bakr Siddiq, anhu. And he said to Abu Bakr, he said, Abu Bakr, the Sahaba are saying that make somebody else inside instead of, or instead of Osama, the general of this army. Make somebody else. And the narrations mentioned Abu Bakr was sitting down and he jumped up and he grabbed the beard of Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he said, oh, Umar, do you want me to demote a man who the message of Allah made a general? Do you want me to demote a man who the message of Allah made a general. And then he said, go Umar, tell him that I am not demoting him. And Umar went out and the Sahaba, uh, Sahaba said to uh, Umar, what happened? And Umar said, may your mothers lose you. May your mothers lose you. This is what happened to me. But see, this was a man who loved the message of Allah, but he embraced his teachings. He embraced his teachings.